All right, so I'm just going to get right into it. I was told earlier this month by one of my best sources in distribution that Samsung is planning to announce in January that they are ending SATA SSD production at some point in the next couple of years and halting sales of SATA SSDs to new customers that aren't people that already have outstanding contracts that they need to fulfill. Now, for obvious reasons, I won't say exactly when I was told this, but I do believe enough weeks have passed for this to have been filtered through enough people behind the scenes to ensure that my source is safe, and so that's why I'm telling you today. Well, additionally, I have also in the past week gotten another source that instilled more confidence in me to move forward with this story. That second source, one in retail, they were able to back up a key detail from the first source, specifically that they were warned from a major SSD company's rep that SATA drives will be harder to get by mid-2026. And by the way, I have to say that this is almost public information to anybody who doubts me putting this report out right now. You see, Samsung has already announced that they are pivoting away from more budget and older tech products to the latest stuff. Although, no, they haven't literally spelled out for obvious reasons exactly what this will mean. This does include the eventual halting of SATA SSD production. They just don't want some of their customers to be prematurely mad at them yet. And so that's why they're waiting, at least I was told, until January to make this announcement. And unfortunately, from a business perspective, this really actually makes a ton of sense for Samsung. First of all, Samsung probably doesn't see the point in manufacturing budget SSDs or really budget anything anymore in a market dominated by AI where people will pay top dollar for the best stuff. And the fact of the matter is that any SSD that uses a SATA interface is a budget product. In fact, I was directly told that Samsung will be focusing on the most premium of premium products next year. That means HBM4 for AI customers, then GDDR7 for AI customers, and then even though I would see this as a premium product, NVMe SSDs that are much faster than SATA. That comes in like third place. And actually on that last bit about NVMe drives, there's an important point I also want to focus on for a second as well that was explained to me by my sources, and that's that just in general, NVMe drives, M.2 drives, they're more profitable than SATA SSDs. Obviously, right, one reason that they're more profitable is that they are always faster, and so you can demand more money from a product that has more bandwidth. And I do mean basically always faster as well, because if you go look at SATA 3 SSDs, you can see that they're pretty much all near the theoretical limit of SATA. Like at this point in basically every SATA SSD, it's that SATA interface that is the bottleneck, not the NAND, that could be providing more bandwidth were it to be in any other product, and meaning Samsung could probably charge more for it if they use that NAND in almost any other product, even some of the latest flash drives actually at this point. But honestly, it's not just the interface either. You see, open up any SATA drive and you will see that it's actually a somewhat complex to manufacture product compared to an NVMe M.2 drive that, well, you can't even open up. It's pre-opened up. There's just less parts on NVMe drives. And for that reason, they are fundamentally more profitable at a base level, even if they were just as slow as say to SSDs. And so to be clear, what I'm saying is that even long-term, while Samsung will come back to making more consumer SSDs in a year-ish, and I'll talk about that later in the video, like when that will happen, from now on, it sounds like it's pretty much all NVMe, all M.2 drives, and they're pretty much done with SATA after they get through fulfilling existing contracts that are still outstanding. But yeah, so what does that mean for SSD pricing next year? What about long term after next year? Well, yeah, unlike that Micron killing crucial thing, I actually think this could have pretty real impacts on gamers in the short term and even the medium term. I'm going to explain why this is much worse than that Micron killing crucial thing and what this directly will mean for pricing. But first, an ad from a sponsor. If you're watching this, you've probably consumed hundreds of tech reviews, leaks, and deep dives into AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA products, maybe just even in the past year. But here's the problem. I bet oftentimes, months after you learn something from some video, uh, you completely forget where you saw it. And when you want to share it with someone on Reddit or in some tech discord, 
Well, you can't remember exactly where you heard that thing you wanted to share. Well, Recall, our sponsor for this video, fixes that by giving you one place to capture everything you read, watch, or listen to in one AI-powered knowledge base. You see, with Recall's browser extension, you can save, summarize, and chat with all your content in one click, whether it's YouTube videos, PDFs, articles, or podcasts and TikToks on a mobile app. Recall automatically organizes it into a connected knowledge base so you can search and even chat with everything that you've saved there. And, well... They just released a massive update as well, so you can take your own notes right inside of Recall with their rich block style editor, and that includes tables, code blocks, math equations, to-do lists, and more, so all your saved content and personal notes lives together in one place. You can even chat with your own notes, quiz yourself on them if you want to, and see how they connect. And here's an example of how it can get really useful. You could ask Recall a question like, please review my tech reviews and my personal tech notes to assess which products I should probably plan to replace in 2026. And then Recall will pull answers from your saved content and align them with your personal notes. This can give you tailored answers for your needs, not just generic tips that other AI would give you. And so look, if you want to be smarter and more organized and actually learn from all the content that you're reading, listening to, and watching, uh, try Recall for free at getrecall.ai or use code MOORE25, that's MORE25, for 25% off the unlimited plan. It is valid until the 1st of January 2026. And also, by the way, doing these things that I just mentioned helps the channel a lot in addition to letting you try out Recall for free. So please support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out Recall through the links below today. All right, so before the break, I did mention that in contrast to today's leak, today's leak that Samsung is killing off their SATA SSD business and that that will, at least in the short and medium term, affect consumer prices badly, I said that Micron killing off Crucial probably has a minimal impact in the short term on consumer prices and basically no impact on consumer prices long term. Now, to be clear, that is not, that is not to say that this market isn't already f***. It is, and I put out a whole report on why this market is so screwed up right now, but the thing is that crucial going away isn't adding to the pain, it's just a symptom of the pain we're all already feeling. And for those who want to know why, I actually had a memory executive who has experience at places like Micron and SanDisk, a multi-decade veteran of the DRAM industry, on the last broken silicon. And we talked about what it means for Micron to kill off Crucial and how that will or really will not affect consumer prices long term. Please check out that podcast if you want the full explanation from an actual expert not just a talking head and it's gotten really overwhelmingly positive review for how unclickbaity we were with our explanation of the subject dave really knows his stuff i really have to recommend that episode but for those who undoubtedly will not watch or listen to that episode the point is, is this First of all, Samsung and SK Hynix, they already don't have consumer lines, and that doesn't stop companies like G-Skill and Adata from buying Samsung and SK Hynix memory chips to make their RAM. Again, I want to be clear, Crucial existing with Micron is an exception to the rule. Samsung and SK Hynix do not even have forward-facing consumer lines, and that's because they don't need them. They, and even Micron already, already supply RAM chips to G-Skill and Adata, for example. And speaking of those companies, yes, you can look it up online. Literally, G-Skill and Adata and of all of these RAM companies already are selling you Micron chips right now. Really, if you go and look at the Amazon RAM top seller list, out of the top 21 best-selling RAM kits, only three, by the way, are even crucial DDR5 kits. There's two other ones, but they're DDR4, so that's just outgoing for basically everyone eventually. And the top four aren't even crucial. And so even if that was removed from the market, we're talking about like maybe 10% of a market. But even then, I can promise you that a fourth of those RAM sticks that don't have a Crucial sticker on them, they have Micron chips with a different sticker than Crucial. Micron is already supplying tons of companies RAM chips. They don't need the Crucial line to do that. And so that's why long term, it's really not going to make a difference at all. And even short term, well, you can still buy Crucial. Go buy G-Skill. It is Crucial, basically. And the fact of the matter is that Micron is doing this 
because they don't want to have their support staff servicing warranties and stuff for their crucial brand anymore if they can. I've been told they are doing this. Redirect those staff to other parts of the company to make sure their AI customers are happy. That doesn't affect the total amount of RAM going to consumers. That's already being screwed up. And again, I put out an article and a video explaining why that's all screwed up, but this doesn't affect that. Crucial isn't adding to the pain. They're just a symptom of it. However, this new leak I'm putting out today regarding Samsung killing off SATA SSD production, yeah, this is going to be an issue in the short term and probably in the medium term as well. Although I do have some good news for the long term outlook. Stick around till the end of the video to hear said good news. But first, let's go over the bad news. Why Samsung killing off their SATA SSD line is worse than Micron killing off Crucial. So first of all, well, I can honestly say that I myself have literally not bought any SATA SSD for years. Still about 20% of the top 10 list of Amazon SSD bestsellers are SATA drives. And 10% of them are literally, actually the number three spot, I believe, a Samsung SSD drive. So look, pulling 10% of SSD supply, any SSD supply off of the consumer market, that is going to abruptly raise prices. Because once you remove that, well, there's just less supply in general that will raise the price of basically all SSDs. Furthermore, unlike the crucial situation where Micron was simply focusing on larger AI and server contracts for the foreseeable future, but still probably allowing G-Skill to buy up their memory, that's it for that form of SSD. And it's not like they're just adjusting to one for part of the market short term like crucial is they're literally ending SATA SSD production long term from what I am told and that means there will be more panic buying to make sure some customers have enough SSDs for the long term because some devices just will keep using SATA for a while and again that's more of a panic buying situation than what is happening here with crucial and so for the next two years I think this is just going to flat out drive up storage costs. But what about the long term? Well, long term, Samsung, like all of these companies, is just going to go where the money is. And according to industry experts I talked to behind the scenes this week, these companies expect a consumer mega cycle that will need the latest RAM and SSDs around 2027 or maybe slightly after that. You see, that's when widespread local AI apps are going to need to actually run on consumer devices. And those devices will need cutting edge RAM and SSDs. And the PS6 and even the next gen Xbox is expected around then as well. They're gonna need a lot of the latest RAM and SSDs. And these products, yeah, they're gonna have to get them from somewhere. And so I believe that right now is about building all of the infrastructure for creating the apps, creating the models. But in about a year and a half, as you're gonna see a pretty hard pivot, I am told a pendulum swinging the other way to actually letting people have a device to use these new apps and products that are being built right now. At least that's what people are forecasting. And to anyone that says there won't be a more consumer oriented pivot for the AI market in one to three years, I have to tell you that if that doesn't happen, I just think that this bubble will explode sooner rather than later. Because eventually, if you're telling people that you're spending all of this money in a circular fashion to build something, you actually have to build something people use. And it's not all just going to be in the cloud. And so something has to give here. Eventually, the AI becomes hyper useful and consumers need devices in their hands that use uses the new useful apps or the bubble will pop either way prices should come down in a year or so and so yeah that does mean that eventually ssd prices will come back down but they won't be in the form of cheap sata drives possibly ever again at least not from samsung uh, oh, and this is backed up by other sources I talked to as well, not just the OG source. I've been told that people are being soft warned that, well, things will be horrible next year, that even as early as the end of next year, you could see prices start to softly come down already. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that in like quarter four of 2026, RAM or solid state drives will cost what they cost back in 2024 but it does probably mean that that is not where the peak will be. Most people I speak to think the peak in pricing has actually already happened or it is going to happen in the next three to six months before you see that trend start to go down. And by the way, a big part of that is, well, there were legitimate 
you know, I think probably anti-competitive reasons that OpenAI and their uh, adversaries bought up all this RAM to deprive the market. I'm told that what's going on right now is mostly panic buying and that you can already see behind the scenes. I was told this directly that people hoarding RAM are not selling it for as outrageous a price as they thought they would be able to in bulk as often as they thought they would. That there was the initial deprivation of the market, again, that I already put out a whole video about. And then there was all the panic buying. And now there's kind of panic hoarding that's already starting to make these hoarders nervous. And they're realizing that, well, for example, OpenAI secured like 40% of global DRAM production. Right, they secured it. So that is what's causing the pricing issues. But them having tons of RAM, more RAM than they even need is what's causing the issues. I don't think they're going to be going around next summer and buying up $1,000 RAM kits. And I don't think consumers will stomach that as well. I think most people will buy 16 gigabyte kits to get through the year. And I'm told the 16 gigabyte kits will not continue to go up in price as much. And eventually that's probably then going to buckle. So yes, there's a lot of panic right now. That is what's keeping the pricing high short term. And it is going to be a brutal, brutal early next year. Like I, I saw a quote today from an OEM telling their partners that they literally do not know what their laptops will cost next year yet. And their partners are just going to have to wait a few weeks until they can tell them what outrageous prices they will charge in quarter one. But again, that's quarter one, probably also quarter two and maybe quarter three. I do get the feeling that this shortage, while it will be brutal, will not last for like three years, that it will probably last for like nine to 18 months. And because of that, what I would say is, do not miss the boat, right? Buy whatever SSDs you need right now. And if you've already missed the boat on RAM, but you already think you have what you need to get through a year, don't panic. Buy. I do not believe this will last as long as previous shortages did. It will just be a brutal, brutal winter for supply. Well, there are shortages. But anyways, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, and I certainly hope you did, please make sure that you like it, share it, subscribe, subscribe, check that you are subscribed to Moore's Law is Dead on YouTube. Half of you apparently are. Please subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead on YouTube and uh, ring the bell button. Give us hype points for this video. And then also, like I said, check out that last Broken Silicon episode. Subscribe to Broken Silicon on your podcast app of choice and give us a review that also helps us outside of YouTube get new fans. And then, you know, I've got more stuff coming, so that's also why you'll want to be subscribed. I've got uh, at least one more leak before this year ends that's going to make a lot of your jaws drop and go, uh-uh, is he memeing right now? Is this really something he knows about this early? You're not going to want to miss it. So, yeah, make sure you're subscribed and consider supporting Moore's Law Z on Patreon as well. We just had a new die shrink come out. That's a one-hour video with me and Dan going over what lessons we can learn from the 2021 shortages for the coming shortages in 2026 and discussing a gamer outrage. Please, you get access to that and access to hundreds of other die shrinks if you join Moore's Law is Dead, one of the lowest tiers. And you can also get access to asking guest questions as well, like Dave Eggleston, who was an expert. Moore's Law Z fans were able to ask him questions at the lowest $1 tier. And soon, David Does Tech Stuff will be the upcoming guest to look over everything that's happened in 2025. You'll be able to ask him questions as well at the lowest tier. But all right, for everybody else, no matter what though, if you made it this far towards the end of the video, at a minimum, thank you for watching. <laughs>